Maddie Mac Brislick is in the house. Maddie, good to see you. You too. How's it going? You do know traffic stinks around this town, right? Yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but you made it in. Yeah. And uh, I, I heard Tuca was on earlier today, and I heard Greg Hill ask Tuca the same question I'm going to ask you. How long did it take you to get over it? I don't think I have gone over it yet, to be honest. Um, I've tried my best not to think about it kind of initially after we were done, but... Um, you know, starting to get ready for next season and get back on the ice, it's uh, kind of bringing back uh, memories, obviously, uh, just getting the chance to play in the Stanley Cup. And uh, I think as time's winded down, you've realized how special of a season it was, but still have that sting um, of not, you know, winning the final game. So it's definitely uh, what's motivating us, just talking to the rest of the guys, um, you know, coming in the next year. Will you ever watch it? I, it's it's kind of come on. Uh, they showed replays a couple times. I'll like kind of convince myself to watch it, maybe for like the first minute, and then realize you know what what kind of transpired. So um, I, I switch it right away. Now some athletes have said they would rather not get to the Cup final, Super Bowl, NBA Finals, whatever, and lose. They'd they'd rather get bounced earlier because it doesn't sting as much. Do you feel that way? I mean, you know, it definitely hurts. Um, you know, more when you do make it all the way and kind of don't finish that game. I got a, I got a taste of that in college, making it to the national championship, playing in the garden for, you know, the hometown team, kind of same thing. So um, I don't know if I agree with it. You know, it's still really cool. It's still a successful season overall, yeah. right? But it's just, it's, yeah. I mean, playing in the Stanley Cup is obviously a dream come true, and that's, you know, what you dream of. So I think you get, um, you gain a lot of good experience making it that far and playing on that stage. So kind of gives you a little bit of confidence going into the next season. Was it uh, a physically challenging season for you? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, you know, there were quite a lot of injuries this year and was able to stay relatively healthy, at least in the beginning half. So probably got a little bit more opportunity than maybe I'd anticipated. And um, But you made the most of it when you yeah, got it. Yeah, I, I welcome that. Obviously, that's what any player wants is more opportunity and a chance to prove themselves. So. Definitely uh, thankful for the coaching staff and you know management to you know trust in me to be able to take on those minutes and I think I gained a lot of experience and just kind of having the confidence to uh, you know knowing you can play against uh, some players who you normally wouldn't on the first and second lines things like that so um, that was all good for sure. How are you feeling now? I mean, obviously, you and most of your teammates were dealing with injuries throughout the whole playoff run, and then that extends your off season or it shortens your off season, mm -hmm. I should say. How are you feeling right now? I feel really good. Um, I took some time off, just kind of making sure you know my head was okay. Obviously, after the finals, so um, it, it's obviously really kind of tough getting going again the first few weeks. But um, I've been in the gym for quite a while now and back on the ice so starting to feel like myself and starting to get a little anxious for camp people who don't know the story uh matt grew up literally in the shadow of of the gardens he could see the garden from where he lives uh his dad john is on the bull gang at the garden and uh you got to skate on that ice a lot over the course of your life it must have been surreal for you to put that jersey on the first time yeah it really was um you know the giraffe was obviously really cool i had no idea i remember just kind of blacking out and not even going into the I was just hoping to get drafted really and to have you uh, you know go to your hometown team and getting to play college so close was pretty cool but just getting to throw the jersey on for that first game um, definitely brought back a lot of memories and um, you, you try your best to eliminate distractions obviously and not think about it too much but um, you know it's pretty cool especially you know going through the playoff run like we had um, you know, getting to have family and friends come out and support and um, just seeing the, the whole city obviously turn for hockey. And uh, it's been pretty cool, obviously, you know, having the Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics have so much success. And to be able to add to that and be part of the team is certainly a dream come true. Does it add more pressure to you? I mean, obviously you didn't go too far for college, but then to, now you're playing, playing pros right here in your backyard. Is there more pressure? Because... Friends and family are seeing every single game, yeah. whereas, you know, if you were playing in Arizona, maybe not the case. I mean, you know, some people talk about how maybe it can be a bad experience having so many people around, uh, ticket requests, things like right. that. But um, I'm just really, you know, thankful to be on the stage and make it in the NHL. That was goal number one, obviously, for me coming out of college and kind of having to fight for that. Um, you know, playing in the AHL for my first year and, at the beginning of my second year too so 
Um, I, I try my best not to wander, let my mind wander about, you know, distractions like that. And my family does a great job of handling all that for yeah. me. So they, uh, they make it pretty easy on me just to go out there and play. Speaking of, of local kids playing here, rumor has it your, your summer roommate's Ryan Donato. Yeah. So he's back home, obviously. Right. He got traded to Minnesota in the Charlie Coyle deal. Yep. But you guys got to spend most of the summer together. Yeah, it worked out. I live with uh, Dan Hine in the summer, and he, he gets to go back uh, to Vancouver. So Ryan was looking for a place to live. And, uh, you know, it's been nice to have him around. Obviously, he's back to training in Boston, and he's getting ready for a big year, obviously, going back out to Minnesota. So, um, you know, we've been kind of lucky to have uh, – quite a lot of guys around the same age uh, coming through the system through the Bruins in Providence so um, did you tell him you like Charlie Coyle better yeah <laughs> <laughs> I had to drink it too no um, it was pretty cool obviously weird situation for the both of them Charlie getting to come back home I think I think it's worked out really yeah. well for, for both involved so um, yeah it was obviously tough to kind of see a friend go but at the same time it's it's been pretty cool for Charlie to to see uh, the amount of support that he has and his friends and family is coming to the game. so, And obviously it was unbelievable for us in the playoffs as well. So um, certainly a welcome addition. What's it like uh, playing with Zidane Ochara, a guy who was in the league probably when you were in preschool or whatever it is? Just, I mean, the, the, your whole NHL experience as a fan, Zidane Ochara has been a part of it, and now he's, he's on your team, and it doesn't really seem like there's any sign of him stopping. No, I mean, I, as, I'm really awestruck by him, obviously. Um, just to see, you know, the age he's getting to, but how he takes care of his body. And he still plays big minutes, and he plays them really well, too. And um, it's pretty inspiring just to see, you know, his journey. Obviously, like you said, it, it's really weird uh, watching yeah. him as a fan on TV, and now he's two stalls away from me. We were getting dressed to go out to a game together. So, no, but he's been really good uh, to me, and he's very vocal. Um, especially as a young guy I lean on him throughout the game and um, try to emulate a lot of things that he does just to, to get ready for games and take care of your body there's a 42 yeah, year old quarterback who's pretty good who plays 25 miles away it's hard for fans to understand what your veteran defenseman does like at the conditioning test and the and the testing at the beginning of the year yeah like that's the thing he's not just like 42 years old and kind of going through the motions he's leading you know all the pull-ups and everyone knows that and um he's taking care of himself and he's in ridiculous shape every every single year so he certainly um leads by example for the whole team and he sets the precedent so um we're very fortunate to have him as a leader do you keep up with all the off-season rumors whether it's trade rumors or who's a free agent you know who's a restricted free agent do you keep up with that or is it just i'll show up and do my job um it's i mean you definitely hear chatter for sure it's inevitable um, I think there's just a lot of not really sure what's going on. It's kind of seemed like there's a lot of guys who are still unsigned kind of going into camp. but Like two on your team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, I think that as a player, it's out of your control. So right. you're just trying to, especially with the short and summer, you're just trying to make sure you show up in as best shape as you can and relatively healthy. So I'm sure those things will get um, settled out with, with the team and, We'll be uh, really excited to have those guys back because they're a huge part of our team. I know how important family is to you. And I have to admit, when I saw the video of the first father's trip <laughs> that your dad got to go on, yeah. a guy who has toiled in that building for years and years and years, and now he's a dad. And yeah. he's out watching his son play on the road. That was a very cool thing. Yeah, that was so cool. Um, I, we've kind of talked about it back and forth, but... Uh, it was also one of my first games getting called up for the season, so a lot was kind of happening, but looking back, that was probably one of the coolest experiences to see him kind of get to relax and enjoy himself. And um, we, got to, we started in Philadelphia. We got to go to a great city in Nashville, had a couple of days off. So um, just to see him with a huge smile on his face enjoying himself was... Uh, and your sweater on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was weird, but um, yeah, it's kind of funny just to see your name in the back of a jersey and he takes a lot of pride in that well i know that as i said a local guy you know as well as anybody around here about the jimmy fund and the dana farber cancer institute the bruins are very active in hospital visits and visiting with kids 
you probably as well versed as anybody in how important the Jimmy Fund is to the people of this community. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, everyone knows about it and the impact that it has in the city, and um, it's huge. Um, you know that the the team, you know, likes to get involved with it as much as they can, and. I know as players getting to, to go on those hospital visits and talk to the kids and just to meet with them in person and kind of build that connection and see how much it brightens their day, um, kind of brightens your day as well. So um, at the same time you're giving back, you're also, I feel like they're giving to you at the same time. So it's a really cool experience and, um, you know, it's meant a lot to the city of Boston. Good to see you again. I'll see you on the ice soon. Sounds good. A little sooner maybe than we're ready for, but you'll be back on the ice soon. Yeah. Good to see you, Matt. Thank you. Bruins defenseman Matt Grizzlick joining us.